at the moment in South Africa, a lot of boreholes, a lot of wells are not being monitored because there are actually not people in rural areas to do the work and it is too expensive to actually send the test into labs. So what we are trying to do is to develop a field test kit so that we can actually determine how bad the water quality is and that people can then do appropriate interventions to um, improve the water quality at a local level. Um, the challenge is that even if we provide a better test, we don't know um, we don't know at a municipal or provincial level that there is a problem at a particular site. So one of the things that UCT is responsible for is to develop a communication system so that using cell phones people can now report what the water quality result is. So once they have taken a test once they have basically gotten a result of the quality of water in their rural area they are then able to um, use a cell phone application a menu on their phone to basically report that result to the relevant authorities so that the municipal officers even if the municipality were to be 200 kilometers away that that municipality officer now knows that a remote area has a problem with a water source and can then react on that The project was first implemented in the Huntam municipality in the Northern Cape. The Northern Cape is an arid, sparsely populated, semi-desert region of South Africa. The Huntam municipality extends for an area of approximately 200 kilometers around the main town, Calvinia. Calvinia has a population of about 18,000. The surrounding areas include towns of 5,000 and small villages of around 100 people. Key challenges in the area are the long distances on gravel roads between communities and the lack of electricity in some areas. We can tell you about Swarkop. Swarkop is a very dorp. There are 180 people, groot and klein. Want die groot is nie klein, is ek in die wanker ook daar. So, maar ek is nou maar eindelijk waar is die dokter, die postkantoor, die bank, you name it, I am it. So, maar soek sê, dit is nog um, lekker plattelandse mense hier en daar. Daar is so 20 pensioentrekkers, so dit is ouwens wat nou ou mense is, boos 60, wat nou soort van aftree in een baie rustig, eindelijk een baie rustige neerwijse op Swarkopik, want nie niemand plaal en nie niemand wil hulle geld neem nie. Of, so, dan is daar nou klomp die plaaswerkers, die manswerk, Ja. Als we tot boven bij Merki. Ik kan zo bij je oor wees, maar ik ben niet mijn manier mannen wees. Oké. En je moet gaat die aasemal op om op die dingen zijn die wat die dingen zijn die je moet zeggen Ja, ongeveer van ja. En je prop op, lekker stief. Ik heb een pen hier. Ik schrijf je hier zoals die daar zijn. Schrijf je datum en hoe laat je hem gevat hebt. Ja, dat is heel belangrijk. Als hij slecht is, dan gebruik hij zwart. Na een dag gebruik hij pak zwart. Maar als hij. Als hij denkt, hij gaat niet zo blank wezen. Hij gaat zo geler gekleerd hier. Maar dan is hij water ook nog. Gaan af, volgende. Ook die datum is die derde, is er weer. When staff take their samples, what would happen is they would send the result in using the cell phone menus. 
um, that then gets uh, basically imported into a central database. So we have a database here at UCT that we will receive the results from Saul. Um, also a copy of the results is being sent to, to Rion as the municipal officer, uh, particularly if there is a failure of the test, so if the test indicates that there is, the water is contaminated, then he will receive immediately an SMS that basically provides him with information that the particular side of middle post has just uh, shown contamination. We will also then have a feedback loop, which would mean that Saul will get a response saying the test has failed. Please retest, because we obviously can't exclude the fact that the test itself might have been faulty. So um, we we then basically have a tracking system. We can respond and provide feedback immediately, and um, the data is then collated at UCT and we can over months then also develop trends, we can give feedback, we can provide information and reports to provincial level and that really shows that for the first time one actually has a good tracking mechanism to see how often water tests are taken and yeah and one can create data out of that that will be useful with regards to making decisions for example on budgets, um, how much Chlorine is available at the place, and can people actually appropriately respond to contamination of water? The project has been expanded to include three districts in the Eastern Cape Chris Harney, Alfred and So, and Amatola districts. This is an impoverished area that was not provided with good infrastructure during the apartheid era. This region receives more rain than the Northern Cape and is characterized by dense but dispersed settlement, subsistence agriculture and a poor road network. Um, the Krasani district uh, has proven as a very interesting case study because there are 15 environmental health officers that work with us, so they train people. They're well equipped to actually take lab samples. Their biggest challenge is that they're very thinly spread over an incredibly vast area. So the municipality is a big municipality and there is no possibility of actually testing all the field sites. Partially due to the fact that also um, there are not enough cars available to actually drive to every place. There are not enough, there's not enough time in a month to actually take enough samples. And again, the samples have to be sent away to a lab in a substantial distance so that they can actually be analysed and then offer the feedback to actually find out how good or bad water is is so delayed that one might wait three weeks before a response is actually given. So for three weeks, if the water was contaminated, people would have used contaminated water for three weeks. One of the interesting aspects has been how the project has been taken up in Hunter Municipality over, over the time we've been there. So we've been in Hunter for 10 months and if one looks at comparative data over that time, um, 2,200 field tests were taken. So we collected 2,200 data set if, if you would like to call it that and over the same period only 200 lab samples were taken. So by increasing the number um, of tests actually taken in the field from 200 lab samples to 2,200 field test kits, we can really show that it's just more regularly tests are taken. And whilst one recognizes the difference between a lab sample and a field test kit, the hope would be that a field test kit can result in us reacting faster to a problem and that would then allow for municipal officers to really identify hotspots so when a field test kit comes back with a negative result uh, or with a basically a showing a contamination that the municipal officer then can follow up with a lab sample which we believe would be a more efficient way of actually currently distributing resources. Mm -hmm.